There are several methods in the drama draw of reciting the Buddha's name. One, mindfulness of the Buddha by holding his name. You can recite the name of whichever Buddha you like. For instance, if you like Amitabha Buddha, you can recite Namo Amitabha Buddha, or perhaps you like to recite Namo our original teacher Shakyamuni Buddha. Maybe you want to recite Namo Medicine Master Buddha who dispels calamities and lengthens life. It's the same with any Buddha throughout the ten directions. You can recite any name you wish. The object of being mindful of the Buddha is to consolidate your thoughts into one thought of mindfulness of the Buddha to dispense with all other false thoughts. If you don't have extraneous thoughts, you will not give rise to evil thoughts. And when you don't give rise to evil, you are on the road to good. So, mindfulness of the Buddha by contemplating. You will consider how Amitabha Buddha has a wide ray of light that shines between his brows. The line of a verse in his prayer says, his white ray of light comes as high as five Mount Sumeru's. The verse goes on. His violet eyes are as large as the four seas. Can you imagine that? If you are small-minded, then your idea of the Buddha will be fairly small when you consider him. If you have a vast state of mind, then your conception of him can be monumental. 3. Mindfulness of the Buddha by contemplating an image. In this method, you look upon an image of Amitabha Buddha while you recite, and as you are mindful of the Buddha, you reflect on his adorned appearance and the characteristics. But I tell you, it can even happen that you become possessed by a demon when being mindful of the Buddha. In general, no matter what practice you do, you must have some virtuous conduct, some virtual in the way. When I was in Hong Kong at Tao Yu Mountain, a Tsilasing temple, a bishu wanted to do a standing Buddha session. In this practice, one stays in one room and walks continually, and so it is called the continuous walking samadhi. And also the standing Buddha samadhi. For 90 days, one walks in a room without sitting, lying down, or going to sleep. This is a drama door of particular vigor. That Bishu was being mindful of the Buddha while he practiced his Dhammadhar of continuous walking. One day I noticed that the more he recited, the louder he became until he was uh, bellowing, Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Buddha. When I heard him reciting that way, I knew he had entered some state, so I went to take a look. He was running around the room reciting like mad. What had happened? In a past life, this Bishu had been an ox. Since he had performed some merit at a temple by blowing the fields, he had become a monk in this life. However, although he was a monk, and his ox-like habits hadn't changed yet. He had a terrific temper. The reason he was running around the room when I found him was that he had seen Amitabha Buddha come and he was chasing him. What was actually going on? He'd gotten into a demonic state. It wasn't really Amitabha Buddha who had come. It was a water buffalo that had come up out of the sea. This weird water buffalo had transformed itself into an appearance of Amitabha Buddha in order to dupe the monk. The monk thought it was Amitabha Buddha who had come, and so he went running after him. When I got there, I made use of a drama and broke up his demonic state. So sometimes you can even be possessed by demons when reciting the Buddha's name. For mindfulness of the Buddha in his actual in his actual appearance, this means investigating dhyana, visit and pursue the topic. Who is mindful of the Buddha? Now in this passage of text. The person who always remembers in the Buddha and the person who never remembers is we living beings. If two such people were to meet, 
Even if they were to see each other, they would not take notice. Even if they should encounter each other, it would be just as if they hadn't met. Maybe they see each other at some place or other, but their lives don't unite. Their energies don't interact because one person remembers, but the other one doesn't. They can't get together. Even if they were face to face, it would be as if they were not. Sutra. If two people remember each other until the memory of each is deep, then in life after life, they will be together, like a form and its shadow, and they will never be at odds. Commentary. If two people remember each other until the memory of each is deep, if they remember each other very well. Then in life after life, they will be together like a form and its shadow, and they will never be at odds. Your shadow follows you everywhere and never leaves you. These two people will be that way and will never be at odds. They will never fail to recognize each other, or have a feeling falling out. Sutra, out of pity for living beings. The first commands of the ten directions are mindful of them as a mother remembers her child. If the child runs away, of what use is the mother's regard? But if the child remembers his mother in the same way that the mother remembers the child, then in life after life, the mother and child will not be far apart. Commentary: Out of pity for living beings, the first commands of the ten directions are mindful of them. As a mother remembers her child, the Buddhas of the ten directions have a sympathetic regard for living beings in the same way that a mother has regard for her child. If the child runs away, of what use is the mother's regard? Although the mother thinks about him all the time, is of no benefit. But if the child remembers his mother in the same way that the mother remembers the child. Then, in life after life, the mother and child will not be far apart. If they remember each other in the same way, then the mother and child will be together life after life. They won't be separated from each other. That is to say, if the Buddhas are mindful of us living beings, and if we living beings are also mindful of the Buddhas, then for life after life, we will not be separated from them. We will be together. Sutra: If living beings remember the Buddha and are mindful of the Buddha, certainly they will see the Buddha now or in the future. Commentary: If they have a memory of the Buddha and they recite the Buddha's name, it's for sure they can see the Buddha either in this life or in a future life. Sutra: They will never be far from the Buddha, and their minds will awaken. By themselves, without the aid, the aid of experience, commentary they will become enlightened. Sutra: A person who has been near incense will carry a fragrance on his person. It is the same in this case. It is called an adornment of fragrant light. Commentary: A person who has been near incense will carry a fragrance on his person. If someone is permitted with the fragrance of incense. A fragrance will linger around his body. It is the same in this case. It is called an adornment of fragrant light. Sutra on the causal ground. I used mindfulness of the Buddha to enter into patience with the non-production of dharmas. Now in this world, I gather in all those who are mindful of the Buddha and bring them back to the pure land. Commentary on the causal ground. I used mindfulness of the Buddha to enter into patience with the non-production of dharmas. Great strength Bodhisattva says that on the causal ground, that is, when he had first brought forth the resolve to cultivate the way as a bhikkhu, he obtained the patience with the non-production of dharmas by reciting the Buddha's name. Now in this world, the Saha world, I gather. In all those who are mindful of the Buddha, just as a magnet collects iron fillings, great strength Bodhisattva receives and gathers in all beings who practice mindfulness of the Buddha, and brings them back to the pure land.
he takes them to the land of ultimate bliss. Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration. I would select none other than gathering the six organs through continuous pure mindfulness to obtain samadhi. This is the foremost method. Commentary, now the Buddha asks about the Dharma door of perfect penetration. I would select none other than gathering the six organs through continuous pure mindfulness. I have no other choice. I have only the Dharma door of mindfulness of the Buddha. I used this Dharma door to gather in the six sense organs and the false thinking that arises from them. I controlled the six sense organs so they did not create false thinking. I recited so the pure mindfulness of the Buddha continued uninterrupted until I obtained that kind of samadhi. This is the foremost method. This is the best Dharma door. The Ear Organ, Volume 5, Chapter 2, Guan Shin Bodhisattva. Sutra, then Guan Shin Bodhisattva arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, Commentary, above, great strength Bodhisattva told how he cultivated the Dharma door of mindfulness of the Buddha, which is a very appropriate method for people in this day and age, is quite effective. Why? The sutras tell us that in the Dharma ending age, not even one in a million people who cultivate will attain the way, that many people cultivate and don't even one person among them attains to the way. Then what shall we do? Don't worry. It goes on to say, only by mindfulness of the Buddha are they taken across. The Dharma door of reciting the Buddha's name is very easy. With the Dharma door of mindfulness of the Buddha, one transcends the three realms through the side door horizontally and carries one's karma into that rebirth. What does it mean to transcend the three realms through the side door? Is like an insect in a piece of bamboo. If the insect were to gnaw its way out through the length of the bamboo, it would have to go through all the sections. It would take a long time. If the insect were to gnaw a hole in the side of the bamboo instead, it would get out very easily. People who are mindful of the Buddha are like the insect who goes out the side of the bamboo. They escape the three realms on the horizontal plane, right at the level they are. One carries one's karma into that rebirth. The karma one carries is former karma, not current karma. It is old karma, not new karma. This means that before you understood the method of being mindful of the Buddha, you created offenses. You can take that karma with you when you go to rebirth in a pure land. But you shouldn't continue to create bad karma once you know about reciting the Buddha's name because you can't take that karma along. Once you know about mindfulness of the Buddha, you should change your ways. Don't keep creating bad karma. If you do, you will be piling karma on top of karma, adding offenses to offenses. That's called knowing clearly and transgressing intentionally, in which case the offenses are tripled. You can take your old karma with you, but now that you understand the Buddha Dharma, you can't say, oh, I can recite the Buddha's name on the one hand and create bad karma on the other hand, because in the future I can take my karma with me to the land of ultimate bliss. That's a mistake. Not only will you be unable to take that karma with you, you won't be able to be reborn there at all because you'll be hindered by your karma. We people who believe in the Buddha should take care not to create any further offenses once we know about the mindfulness of the Buddha. This section of text concerning great strength Bodhisattva's perfect penetration through mindfulness of the Buddha is extremely important. Everyone should know that the Dharma door of mindfulness of the Buddha is all about. Why should we be mindful of the Buddha? Because we have great causes and conditions with Amitabha Buddha. 
Amitabha Buddha became a Buddha ten compass ago. Before that, he was called Bhikshu Dharma Treasury. At that time, he made 48 great vows. In making his 13th and 14th vows, he said, If the living beings throughout the ten directions say my name and do not become Buddhas, I will not attain the right enlightenment. In other words, if people who recite his name do not become Buddhas, he will not become Buddha. And because of the power of Amitabha's, uh, Amitabha Buddha's vows, everyone who recites his name can get reborn in the land of ultimate bliss. The Pure Land Dharma Door comprises one of the five schools of Chinese Buddhism, the Chen School, Dhyana, the Teaching School, the Vinaya School, the Secret School, the Pure Land School. The Pure Land sect will be the last of the five to endure. In this world, during the Dharma Ending Age, the Suragama Sutra will be the first sutra to disappear. After that, the other sutras will disappear also until only the Amitabha Sutra is left. While the, the Amitabha Sutra remains in the world, it will take many people across. After another hundred years, it will also be gone. Dharma Ending simply means that the Dharma will entirely disappear. Once the, the Amitabha Sutra was, has vanished, all that will be left will be the phrase Namo Amitabha Buddha. This tremendous phrase will also take many people across, then after another hundred years, it too will disappear. All that will be left then will be the name Amitabha Buddha, which will remain in the world yet another hundred years and then vanish as well. At that point, there will be no Buddha Dharma remaining in the world while we are still at the advent of the Dharma Ending Age, we should practice and uphold the events of the proper Dharma Age. That's called requesting that the Buddhas dwell in the world to turn the Dharma wheel. In the Dharma Ending Age, we should not fear any suffering or difficulty. I don't fear the trouble of lecturing the Sutra for you, and you should not fear the trouble of coming to listen. Strike up your spirit. Don't say you're tired and have to go rest. Forget yourself for the sake of the Dharma. Take a look at how Shakyamuni Buddha dwelt in the snowy mountains for six years for the sake of seeking the Dharma. We haven't gone to the mountains for six years, but the least we can do is investigate Buddhism. Take the Buddha Dharma as you would food to eat. If I don't get to hear this sutra lecture, it'd be like not getting to eat for several days. That should be your attitude. I must hear the Dharma. I will certainly work to understand it truly. Where do you go to gain genuine understanding of the Buddha Dharma? You listen to a lot of sutras. Without hearing the sutras, you will be unable to open your wisdom. This is especially true of the Suragama Sutra, for it is the sutra that opens one's wisdom. Just take as an example this section of the method for obtaining perfect penetration, which the 25 sages are explaining. Some have accomplished their cultivation by means of the firelight samadhi. Some reached success by cultivating the water contemplation samadhi. Some reached perfection by means of the wind, some from emptiness. Some cultivated their eyes and won success, and some used their ears. Each of the six sense organs was cultivated by one or another of them. Every one of the eighteen realms was cultivated by someone. Hearing these principles, you should apply them to yourself. Through which sense organ should I cultivate, you ask? Don't be nervous. It is the very organ of the ear which Kuan Yin Bodhisattva used that is best for you. Kuan Yin Bodhisattva perfected his cultivation through the organ of the ear, and Ananda will follow him in cultivating the same method. The Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of former times have left us such a wonderful Dharma door that we should also follow the method of cultivating the organ of the ear to perfect penetration. This is the easiest method. Then Kuan Shin Bodhisattva arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, 
Kwan means to contemplate. Using the wisdom capable of contemplation, one contemplates the objective realm. With the capability of wisdom, one regards the state that is being contemplated. The wisdom capable of contemplation is inherent in the self-nature of Kwan Yin Bodhisattva. The objective realm which is contemplated is that of the sounds made by all living beings. You should look into the sounds of suffering, the sounds of happiness, the sounds of what is neither suffering nor happiness, the sounds of goodness, the sounds of evil, the sounds of truth, the sounds of falseness, contemplate all kinds of sounds. Shi is the wound in the sense of time, the past, present, and future. Contemplate living beings past causes and effects. Contemplate the karma that living beings are now creating. Contemplate the rewards and retributions that living beings will have to undergo in the future. Why is that person suffering so much? You reflect and then you realize, oh, in his last life, he was not filial to his parents and he wasn't kind to people in general. That's why this time his retribution is unfortunate. Contemplate all kinds of sounds. Yin, Bodhisattva, means one who enlightens living creatures. It also means a living being with a great mind for the way. A Bodhisattva is also known as an enlightened living being. That refers to his self-enlightenment. When we say he is one who enlightens living beings, we are referring to his enlightenment of others. Together, this means he is an enlightened living being who wants to cause the all living beings to become enlightened. What Bodhisattvas do is enlighten themselves and enlighten others, benefit themselves and benefit others. You who study the Buddha Dharma should remember the definition of Bodhisattva. Don't let it be like people who held a meeting of the United Sangha, but when someone asked them what Sangha meant, they were left speechless, inconceivable. Sutra, Wound Honored One I remember when, as many compas ago, as they are sent in the Ganges, there was a Buddha in the world named Contemplating the Wounds of Sounds. It was under that Buddha that I brought forth the Buddha Resolve. That Buddha taught me to enter Samadhi through the process, the process of hearing and reflecting. Com commentary. Kwan Shin Bodhisattva said to Shakyamuni Buddha, Wound Honored One, I remember when, as many compas ago, as their sons in the Ganges, passing back through an incredibly long time, unrecognizable ends as numerous as the Ganges sands. There was a Buddha in the world named Contemplating the World's South. Contemplating the World's South is the English translation of the name Quan Shu Yin. This is the Quan Yin of old. That the common Quan Shu Yin also cultivated perfect penetration by means of the organ of the ear. It was under that Buddha that I brought forth the Bodhi Resolve. I resolved to attain the way of enlightenment. That Buddha taught me to enter Samadhi through a process of hearing and reflecting. The Kwanin Bodhisattva, the Kwanin Buddha of old, taught him the process of hearing and reflecting. It is from the wisdom of hearing, the wisdom of reflecting, and the wisdom of cultivating that he entered Samadhi. Here, reflection does not refer to the thinking of the sixth mind consciousness. Rather, it has the meaning of quiet consideration, the skill of Chen. Sutra, initially, I entered the flow through hearing and forgot objective states. Since the sense objects and sense organs were quiet, the two characteristics of movement and stillness crystallized and did not arise. After that, gradually advancing, the hearing and what was heard both disappeared. Once the hearing was ended, there was nothing to rely on, and awareness and the objects of awareness became empty. When the emptiness of awareness reached an ultimate perfection, emptiness and what was being emptied then also ceased to be. Since production and extinction were gone, still extinction was revealed. 
Commentary. Initially, I entered the flow through hearing and forgot objective states. With the wisdom of hearing, one listens inside, not outside. Not tracing after the objects of sound means not following them out. Earlier, the text spoke of not following the six sense organs and not being turned by them. This is known as returning the hearing to hear the self nature. Returning the hearing means not listening to external sounds but turning back instead to hear your own self nature. It means gathering in your body and mind. It means not seeking outside. Turn the mind around and shine it within. Here the text says that Kwanshin Bodhisattva entered the flow, which means he returned and listened to the self nature, enter the flow of the Dharma nature of a sage. He forgot the objective states, all the dust, the defiling objects of the six sense objects as perceived by the six sense organs was forgotten. Since the sense objects and sense organs were quiet, the two characteristics of movement and stillness crystallized and did not arise. The source of the six sense organs and six sense objects ceased to be. It was severed. Here he entered the flow of his own self nature. When that happens, the self nature is still and quiet. When this quietude reaches an ultimate point, the appearance of movement and stillness ceases as well. Basically, movement appears as movement and stillness as stillness. But now, although these two characteristics are as clear as crystal, they do not arise. After that, gradually advancing, the hearing and what was heard both disappeared, as this pure and clear state of quiet increased. As day by day it became more full and complete, the hearing that was capable of hearing the self-nature even truly disappeared. It too was gone. The ability to hear and the objects of hearing both vanished. The organ of the ear was capable of hearing, and the self-nature was what was being heard, but now they too were gone. Once the hearing was ended, there was nothing to rely on. Since the hearing nature was gone, there was no attachment. At that time, it was producing the mind that does not dwell anywhere. Awareness and the objects of awareness became empty. Even the perception of awareness vanished was emptied out. When the emptiness of awareness reached an ultimate perfection, emptiness and what was being emptied then also ceased to be. The emptiness of the nature of awareness reached an ultimate state of perfection. Then the mind capable of creating vanished as did the states that were made empty, so that then there wasn't even an emptiness. As long as emptiness remains, you are still attached to emptiness. But now for Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, there wasn't even any emptiness. Since production and extinction were gone, still extinction was revealed. Since the mind subject to production and extinction vanished, the joining bliss of still extinction manifested. That state is inexpressibly blissful. Sutra Suddenly, I transcended the mundane and transcendental worlds, and throughout the ten directions, a perfect brightness prevailed. I obtained two supreme states. Commentary When still distinction manifested, suddenly I transcended both the mundane and transcendental worlds. This refers to the world of sentience and the world of material objects and throughout the ten directions a perfect brightness prevailed. He was united as one with the walls of the ten directions without any difficulty. I obtained two supreme states. Sutra First, I was united above with the fundamental, wonderfully enlightened mind of all the Buddhas of the ten directions, and I gained a strength of compassion equal to that of all the Buddhas, the first commons. Commentary, his compassionate mind, was exactly like the compassionate mind of all Buddhas. Sutra, second, I was united below with all living beings of the, in the six paths, and I gained a kind regard for all living beings equally. Commentary, second, I was united below with all living beings in the six paths. What are the living beings in the six paths? 
looked at the terms, look at in a, in terms of a single person. The eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind are the living beings in the six parts. They are the cycle of the six parts, as are forms, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, and dramas. These are also the revolutions of the six parts. They are the six parts of living beings in our own self natures. There is a connection between the, these six parts within and the six parts outside. The external six parts are the path of heavenly beings, asuras, people, animals, hungry ghosts, and dwellers in the hells. The category of asuras includes all beings who like to fight, asuras who use their pugnacious natures beneficially join the armed services and protect the country. Asuras who use their propensity to fight in a bad way end up as thieves, robbers, and gunmen. Asuras may live in the heavens, among people, in the animal realm, or as ghosts. Sometimes Asuras are counted as part of the three good paths, that is, the gods, Asuras, and humans. Sometimes they are placed with the four evil destinies, that is, the hells, hungry ghosts, animals, and asuras. When you put them together, gods, humans, asuras, animals, hungry ghosts, and hell dwellers, hell dwellers, you have the cycle of the six paths. The Buddhas are above Kwanin Bodhisattva. So the Bodhisattva says, I was united above with the compassion of all Buddhas. Beings in the six paths are at a lesser level than Kwanin Bodhisattva. So the Bodhisattva says, I was united below with beings in the six paths. Living beings, Chung Sheng, are defined as those born Sheng from a multitude Chung of conditions. There are many factors involved in the birth of beings. The Bodhisattva goes on, I was united with living beings and I gained a kind of regard for all living beings equally. Beings contemplate and seek the kindness of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Sutra, Wound Honored One, because I served and made offerings to the first come one, Kuan Yin, I received from the first come one a transmission of the Vara Samadhi of all being like an illusion as one becomes permitted with hearing and cultivates hearing. Because I gained a power of compassion identical with that of all Buddhas, the first commons, I became accomplished in 32 response bodies and entered all lands. Commentary, World Honored One, because I served and made offerings to the first commons, Kuan Yin, I received from that first commons a transmission of the virus samadhi of all being like an illusion, as one becomes permitted with hearing and cultivates hearing. It is said to be like an illusion because one cultivates without cultivating. Without cultivating, without cultivating, one cultivates. It means that one is always aware of what is going on at any given moment and never forgets about it. And yet, though one does not forget, one does not really think about it either. Without thinking about it, one has nonetheless not forgotten it. Permitted with hearing means that every day he cultivated the method of returning the hearing to hear the self-nature until he was infused with skill. This is the method of the Vara Samadhi. When one succeeds in this concentration, one has attained the Vara Samadhi. Because I gained a power of compassion identical with that of all Buddhas, the first commons, I became accomplished in 32 response bodies and entered all lands. I gained a compassionate power identical to the Buddhas, and it enabled me to make 32 transformation bodies out of my own body. Then I went to all countries to teach and transform living beings.